Born and raised on the farm, Jess is one of the elders of our flock. Having been bottle fed as a lamb, she maintains a congenial and curious, if characteristically distant, relationship with us. Her face is distinctly brown, in contrast to the mostly white or mottled faces of the majority of the ewes in her field. A relic of past times when the breeds that made up the flock were different. She has borne generations of lambs. This spring, she will do so again, for the final time. This is Jack Thacker recording the poem I Sheep at Poswick Farm on the 6th of October 2019. <coughs> 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 I met Jess by hedgerow, under tree, in the lambing shed, in sunshine, in rain, in frost, with the falling of leaves, the thawing of snow, at dawn, at midday, at sunset, over many weeks and years, we lacked a common language, the following are my attempts at translation. Our exchanges would take place in the moments between tasks when we were both idle. Typically, I would kneel or sit so that our eyes were level. Occasionally, she would look to something beyond us. A pheasant launching itself from cover, a dog barking in the distance. But generally, we were undisturbed. Despite being surrounded by the rest of the flock, we felt ourselves to be speaking in confidence and isolation. This is Teresa Thacker recording I Sheep uh, at Poswick Farm on the 6th of October 2019. <coughs> Do you remember your mother? <coughs> I am a mother whom others don't remember. <coughs> if remember means see in your mind's eye slit. But if my young ones tried to find my voice in this field here, all of us speaking at once, yes, they'd remember. 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 I'd hear her. Remember. 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 This is Sam Thacker recording the poem I Sheep at Poswick Farm on the 6th of October 2019. What is beyond the farm? That's like asking me what's beyond the cloister. I wear my habit and go about my needlework of grazing each field to its border, then we're moved. Sometimes a car passes, sometimes walkers look in over the bounds of barbed wire and gap-toothed hedge, onto our inner life, totally unable to comprehend it. And I can see why. It is a hard life to understand. What can you see? So many fields of vision. So many skies, clouds, rooks, oaks. And below a tapestry of grass unthreading before my eyes, I see the hedgerow's darkness. I see a danger there. I see my sister's stillness. I see their brief lives, strong legs 
and stubborn wills. But mostly, I see you, boy. The line of poplars, what does it mean to you? A spine of trees, a wire frame, broken feathered, sunset, a lattice, the choir of birds, with us observing hours, morning and evening. Rainfall, filtering, sprinkled, scents, our breath, a facade espaliered, more than our shelter, shade, span, heard, locked gate, calling lambs to soundproof grief, the betrayal, weaning, whispering, to ignore or wild a wall. How do you grieve? I knew a sister who lost her lambs inside her. It took her too long to recover. Her face was never the same. She lost her wool. She lost, in truth, her purpose. Day after day, she just stood there. She absorbed them. That's how we grieve when we grieve for the weather, for ourselves in winter, for the ground in the endless wet. We spend our lives in mourning. We never forget. Move on. Move, Move on. on. Does the sunrise startle you? Yes, every morning, every single one. Nothing can prepare you for the arrival of the sun. How do you experience touch? The crisp brush of stubble against our heather stem ankles. The tang and sting of scald deep between our toes. The bite and buzz of shears cruising over our bellies. The creeping rot of maggots lifting our skin. The rough hands of a farmer, smooth as a midwife's. The nub of a newborn lamb, nudging for the teat. The dryness of our mouths, milling rolled oats. The threat of a sheepdog's nip, worrying us into form. The warmth of a summer sun, when nothing at all is asked. We feel it too, your presence 
as soon as you enter the field. What is grass? There's a God in the grass and it tells us our purpose which is to tear it all up bit by bit. All day we take our communion. We inhabit a holy carpet. There's a voice in the trees and a drone in the sky to eat, to sleep, to stand and try to die is our purgatory. It's easy enough to say it. Weather is a verb. We go along with rituals. We entertain possibilities. Dust rises, fresh grass. We know where we are going and will go in our time, unless pushed. We are held. We are patient. The operation is tolerated, resistance is offered, otherwise it would be obvious. We are handled, we struggle, we dig in. There is a thing we learn and it comes to us naturally. Soon we return freely to the green of our eyes, of our minds and lower our heads to it. We understand how to suffer. Maggots, blindness, foot rot, worms, loneliness, yes, and mastitis. We are, despite it all, used to it all and its violence. When do sheep fall silent? On the quiet days you can hear it. And the sound of grass being grazed by a hundred or so ewes. A whisper which is also a tearing. It's not the silence you asked for. There's always a call or a cough under the vault of night. The silence comes with absence. When the only traces of us are scraps of webs in hedgerows, our pilgrim's paths in the grass, and an open gate to the yard. <laughs> 